Hi, everyone. You may have seen in AMSAT news or social media the announcement of the delivery and integration of Fox One Cliff. This is the last step for AMSAT engineering in getting one of our satellites to orbit. But what is delivery and integration? I'm going to talk about that in this video. In addition, I have a little surprise at the end. Spacecraft integration is the process of mounting the spacecraft on the launch vehicle. It involves integrating the spacecraft, FOX-1 Cliff in this case, with the payload adapter, and then the payload adapter to the launch vehicle. In the case of a CubeSat, the payload adapter is generically called the dispenser. There are several makes and models of dispensers, and they all generally conform to the original Cal Poly CubeSat design specification, which specs the 3U P-Pod. This means that our FOX-1 physical and mechanical design can be accommodated and launched from other dispensers, such as the Quad Pack and the Pico Satellite Launcher Pack. The basic principle of deploying CubeSats is common to all three of these deployers. There is a spring and a platform or pusher plate on which the CubeSat or CubeSats is loaded. The spring is tensioned and the spring and CubeSats are held down by the closed door. Once in space, the CubeSats are deployed by opening the door and there they go. When we talk of delivery and integration, we are referring to the integration of our spacecraft onto the dispenser. So what is the customer's role in integration? What do I do when I deliver and integrate one of our CubeSats? First off, of course, there's the delivery of the spacecraft. You can ship it ahead or carry it in. And in the case of our FOX-1 1U CubeSats, they fit in this nice small Pelican case, so I will carry it with me on the airplane and to the integration. At the integration, I do a preparation of the spacecraft. Typical for all the FOX-1 CubeSats, I do a checklist of mechanical items, which includes removing the solar panel covers. I'll do battery charging, which typically has been done the night before in the hotel room. And I'll perform an inspection to make sure the antennas are stowed, the pre-flight initialization has been performed, the umbilical port is covered, and all surfaces are visibly clean. Once I have done my inspection, the integrator will do their inspection to ensure that we have met their specifications. Customer involvement in the physical integration is highly encouraged by the mission integrator. This allows both teams to work together in executing the steps necessary for a successful launch and deployment. In all of our FOX-1 integrations, I am the one who loads our CubeSat into the deployer. These photos are from the FOX-1A integration. After we perform the dispenser integration, the dispenser is processed and prepared for launch vehicle integration. In the case of FOX-1A, an intermediate carrier for the launch vehicle was required called the NIP school, Naval Postgraduate School CubeSat Launcher. This was designed to attach P-Pods to a rocket body such as the Centaur. All of the P-Pods were integrated into the NIP school, and then the NIP school was shipped to the launch site. The P-Pod containing FOX-1A, 
BisonSat and ARC-1 is shown here. Upon arrival at the launch site, the NIP school was integrated onto the aft of the Centaur upper stage of the Atlas V launch vehicle. Yes, that's pretty much right next to the engine bell. Fox 1B, also in a P pod, was mounted directly to the upper stage of the Delta II launch vehicle. This video from the launch broadcast shows the sequence of events in assembling the rockets with the second stage, primary payload, P pods, and finally the fairing being installed. Slowing things down a bit, we can take a closer look at the dispenser or P pod being integrated on the launch vehicle. In this vehicle, the P pods are mounted on the angled part of the second stage, just below the primary payload adapter. Finally, once the launch vehicle is in the desired orbit for the injection of the payloads, the dispensers do their thing. Notice that this P-Pod is the same one pointed out in the NIP school, where FOX-1A was integrated to the bottom of that P-Pod stack. You can just catch one final glimpse of FOX-1A as she was on her way to becoming AO-85. I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about the integration process. Now you may recall at the start of the video, I mentioned a little surprise at the end. You may also have seen on Facebook where I put a post with the question, one plus one equals question mark. The answer to that could be found in the pictures that were in the post, but it's probably not obvious. The pictures reveal that a friend of mine, Farhan, VU2ESE, was also present at the integration. He had brought his satellite, ExceedSat1, for integration, so both Fox 1 Cliff and ExceedSat1 are in the same dispenser. I was unaware of this until recently, so it was a nice surprise to see him show up with another amateur radio satellite. And that's the answer to the question. One plus one equals two amateur radio satellites. Farhan visited me on Friday and we went to lunch. I took the opportunity to record a little audio and let him tell you what his satellite is all about. Hi, this is uh, Victor United to Echo Sugar Echo Farhan. Um, and we have recently just finished integrating our ExceedSat 1 uh, due to be launched shortly. So I just wanted to tell you a couple of things about the satellite. Uh, it's made by a company which I co-founded as a gift to radio amateurs. It's called Exceed Space. And uh, this is a one-use satellite. It's, an, uh, it's one of the easy sats that you can work with your handy, hopefully. Uh, it, has, uh, uh, it has an uplink at 435.34 and a downlink at 145.9. Uh, we're trying out something a little unique this time that to open up the transponder instead of the CTCSS at seven, uh, 67 hertz, uh, what you need to do is you need to press the pound key a couple of times. Uh, just that it's a little easier uh, and, uh, and better to be able to detect a DTMF. So just remember to do that when you access the satellite and then the transponder opens for two minutes. The other uh, interesting feature is that it uses RTTY in channel once every minute as a telemetry, we'll have the telemetry frames and decoding out in a little while, uh, hopefully with an online website, we should do that. So um, I hope to see you guys down on the downlink. This is VU2ESE 73. So there you go. You can look forward to two amateur radio satellites on this next launch, our fourth Fox 1 and India's first amateur radio CubeSat. I hope you enjoyed the video. 7-3 and enjoy the birds.